Hi there. Well, today we're going to be hopefully repairing a crankcase that's broken. Now, this is a Mark II Irvine 40 from probably the late late 70s, early 80s. And I'm, re <laughs> I'm really fond of this engine. It runs, or it did run, absolutely beautiful until it had a rather fast and hard re-entry. And it ripped off the exhaust and broke one of the, uh, well, it's not a lug, is it? But it's where the, where the exhaust bolts in. We'll have a look at that in a minute. And uh, like I say, I'm very fond of this engine. It's kind of got some sentimental value to it. And so I'd love to repair it. So we'll have a go at doing that today. It won't be, I don't think anyway, it will be totally uh, seamless. We will see it's been repaired, but hopefully we can make it look nice, professional, and uh, a good honest repair, I guess is the phrase. Let's take a quick closer look, and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Right, well you can see there how that has just ripped off a side uh, of the crankcase there where the, the bolt screws in. And there might be enough thread there to still hold the exhaust on, but it doesn't look good and it won't be very strong. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and build this area up and make it strong enough to be useful. And as I said, so that it looks good as well, a good honest repair. And to do that, we're going to be using some one mil brass and we're going to be using some welding rods that are, oh sorry these are aluminium brazing rods and what i'm going to do is if i just reach for a pointer here we go what i'm going to be doing is there could be oil and stuff in this so i'm going to drill this out to a bigger size so we have a nice clean hole i'm also going to drill in here a couple of one mil holes and i'm going to put in some of the brass that comes round in a curve to give that some strength because this aluminium brazing rod will stick really well to brass as well as aluminium. I'm then going to make a tin shroud to go round here to contain the aluminium as we melt it and this aluminium brazing rod doesn't like sticking to tin so that will, or steel so that will just come off no problem at all. We can then shape it up drill it out and re-tap it. That is a theory. So what I'm gonna do is I'll get that shroud made and I'll also get these holes drilled and get this cleaned up and we'll see what we can do. Right, now I've got that drilled out to four mil. So it's taken all the thread, all the kind of oil and debris that will have been associated with that. And I cleaned up the brake edges using this stainless steel uh, brush is it in camera yeah and you can see that's nice and bright there I'm trying not to uh, sort of scratch the crankcase as I do it you can see it's polished it a little bit there so and I've also drilled some one mil holes that will take this um, brass wire so I'm going to get the brass wire knocked into those holes it's quite a, a tight fit and then we'll get on and solder it Oh, I've also made a little bit of a shroud, which I will wire in place to, uh, to retain the solder. Right, now we can see we've got the holes drilled and the little bits of brass rod stuck in there. And so when that is soldered up, hopefully those brass rods will be clear of the new thread and clear of the outside here, and they will give more strength. I mean this aluminium brazing rod really sticks well to aluminium, it, it, it really is quite strong, but this on a high pressure joint like this or a high stress joint like this will provide a little bit more strength, particularly if it comes down with a bang again. <laughs> so I will get on this shroud, I'm just going to wire that on, the last thing we want is that coming loose halfway through heating it up and I'll get this set up. Because this is aluminium it loses heat really rapidly as we heat it, so we need to be wrapping that up to retain as much heat as possible. You can see I've got this all set up now, I've got my uh, fire bricks, I've got these blankets to keep the heat in and I've just left out the bit that I'm interested in and I've got that bit of a shroud wired on. So I can just 
get in there and do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using uh, map gas, so uh, nice and hot. So I will get this done now, and I will warn you that my fire alarm above the bench will go off, I'm sure. And um, but we'll just press on and get this done. So my apologies for the sound if it does go off, which I'm fairly sure it will. I'll put the fan on as well. Right, well this is just about cold now that we can, uh, that I can just about handle it. And you can see we've got a great big blob of solder on there. Now we have no idea how well that's gone in there, but it looked to be going in pretty well. And what I'm going to do now is machine this. I think you can file it, it's quite hard, but you can file it. But I'm going to just stick it in the mill because I think it'll be a little bit easier. You can see actually there's a little bit that's been missed just right on that very corner but hopefully that will still look okay. So I will get this uh, in the mill and get it cleaned up. Right, now I've got that machined as much as, uh, as I'm going to and now I'm going to get needle files on that and, uh, and clean that up. Right, I've now got the crankcase cleaned up and I'm really pleased with how it's looking. There is just a little bit there where it didn't quite fill, you can see, but you can hardly notice that and as soon as you get a little bit of oil and grunge in that. But I'm really pleased with how that's looking so far. It, it's got a little bit of a dent here. I think that's probably part of the, the accident. I did take a skim off the whole surface so that's nice and flat, but I didn't want to take this down too much to get rid of that. You can see there's a little bit of a, a, a ding on, on the top there where it's pushed back. But if I put a gasket on there, which I always do, that will be absolutely fine. Like I say, I could have taken it off if I wanted. So what I'm going to do now, the next stage, is just to get the hole drilled and tapped. So I've got a muffler here, Irvine muffler, and I just need to, uh, to mark that out and get it drilled. And I'll drill that on the um, on my mill I think and I'll show you how I'm going to line this up I'm going to use a drill with that hole to line it up to make sure it's nice and square first of all though got to just measure it up and work out where I'm going to put it right now I want to drill this so it's parallel to this screw on this side so it's nice and vertical within the case and I've got the case loose in the chuck at the moment 
and I've got to drill, just put that like that, I've got to drill upside down in the, uh, in the collet here and that drill will just about fit inside the, uh, the screw thread and if I can move this up nice there we go nice and smoothly so if I put that there so it's in there now and now tighten this up tighten the stock there we go there look at that that goes in really nice so now if we move the chuck across we'll know we'll get this one on just the same orientation as that one so let's just make sure I've got this tight because we don't want it moving with the pressure of drilling yes brilliant so what I'm going to do now is spot it and then I will drill it and I think it's a I'm not sure what thread, I'm not sure what thread it is actually. I think it is a, a UNC thread, so I'd better check that and get the right size drill. <laughs> Let's get this drilled. A bit of lubrication and uh... right. Well, we'll just get this tap now, and this is five forty. UNC so easy enough to do right well we've got that tapped out and uh, we'll just try this screw in it oh yeah look at that lovely really nice so what I'll do is uh, is I'll get the exhaust on this now and uh, it'll be good get it fitted Right, well there we go, we've now got our crankcase repaired and I am so pleased to get this done because I can now start to build up this engine and I can use it again. It's had quite a lot of wear this engine but it runs so well and without looking at that in detail, scrutinising it, you probably wouldn't notice it's been repaired once it's tarnished down a little bit. I mean I could have spent more time trying to finish it off and blend it in but this is a working engine and it's an honest repair and uh, quite frankly <laughs> it's great to get it done. Well I just need to get this engine built back up now and running again it'll be great to get it running uh, but I suppose the real question is what am I going to put this in? I need to think of a model for it and the plane that I actually was a flying wing that this was in when it uh, came down to ground so hard isn't coming back from that crash so it definitely needs a new model and this is a great technique and I've used it a few times before and I'm looking forward to using it again I've got a few different projects in mind and I mean it's it's a relatively easy technique but I would suggest if you're going to do it practice on an old crankcase, an old exhaust manifold or something because there, there are two things the key to this is getting the temperature right, too hot you'll melt it, not hot enough just won't work. So the, the temperature is crucial but also getting it clean. So anyway, really pleased to get this done and I hope you found it interesting and useful and will experiment yourself trying to fix some of those broken engines. So anyway, thanks very much for watching.